In this video, I will guide you through the proper diagnostic procedure for a faulty vent damper on the gas boiler simulator. Begin by clicking the start button on the phone. Next, let's go to the thermostat by clicking the thermostat icon at the bottom of the page. Click the thermostat selector switch to the heat position. This will also turn up the temperature setting on the thermostat. Now we need to go to the boiler and observe the sequence of operations. Click the boiler icon on the bottom of the page. Removing the bottom cover from the boiler, we can see that there is no burner operation, although there is a pilot present. Next, we want to see if the circulator pump is running. Right click the circulator to center it in your field of view and zoom in. You can see from the graphic that the circulator is operational. This means that we have a problem with the burner circuit. Consulting the troubleshooting flow chart by clicking the tab on the top left of the page, we can see that after seeing that the circulator is started, our next step is to verify that the vent damper is in fact open. The vent damper is a motorized damper that closes off the flue passageway on each off cycle, preventing standby losses of heated air up the draft diverter or draft hood and out of the home, and is an important energy conservation addition to any atmospheric gas boiler. The vent damper includes both the motor to drive the damper, as well as a proving switch that verifies that the damper did in fact open prior to allowing burner ignition. To verify if the damper is open, we can simply look at the shaft on the damper. In the open position, the shaft should be vertical. As we can see here, it's not. The shaft is flat, indicating that the damper is closed. This will not allow for burner operation. With the circulator operational and the vent damper not opening, we've narrowed the problem down to either the combination aquastat, which sends power to the vent damper on a call for heat, or possibly the vent damper itself is the fault. Let's find out. Referring back to the troubleshooting flowchart, we can see that after verifying that the damper shaft is in the flat position and the damper is closed, our next step is to check for 24 volts across the B and R terminals in the aquastat. This verifies that the high limit switch is in fact closed. Let's check it out. Proceed to the aquastat and remove the digital multimeter from the toolbox. Removing the cover from the aquastat and centering it in your field of view, zoom in to locate the BNR terminals on the high limit shown right here. Taking the digital multimeter out of the toolbox, we are going to click it to AC volts and place each of the leads across the BNR terminal on the high limit. As we can see here, we have a reading of zero volts, indicating that the high limit switch is closed and therefore the vent damper should be operational. Next, we need to go and see if 24 volts is being sent to the motor of the vent damper. Begin by storing the leads of the multimeter back at the multimeter by clicking on them. Next, let's go up to the vent damper. Right click to center and measure voltage at the motor connections. Again, referring back to the troubleshooting flowchart, we can see that the motor connections are between pins 2 and 4, or the blue and yellow connection wires at the vent damper motor. Place each of the meter leads across the blue and yellow glowing hotspots at the vent damper motor. Based on our reading of 24 volts, we have verified that 24 volts is present to the vent damper motor, yet it is not opening. Our next step is to check the switch or the proving switch of the vent damper. This can be done by simply clicking the meter leads and placing them on the red and orange hotspots. A reading of 24 volts across this switch indicates that the switch is open. So what we have here is we have 24 volts available to the motor, yet the end switch is not closing and proving that the motor is energized. This verifies that the motor is faulty in the vent damper and needs to be replaced. Prior to doing this, let's get rid of the meter and put it back in the toolbox. Next, we can click on the vent damper to replace it. But wait, first we need to turn the power off by clicking the service switch here on the wall. We don't want to replace any components in a live circuit. Next, click on the vent damper, replace it. The cost of this repair is $200 and we're going to proceed. 
This has in fact corrected the problem. Before leaving the job, be sure to install all covers, caps, and screws back on system components as well as the boilers. Clean the work area by clicking on the broom and don't forget to return the service switch to the on position and return thermostat settings back to their original setting. Good luck.